Hi folks, this is Dan with Dan's Retirement Journey on Philippines Bound. Okay, well I spent a few days uh, working on the healthcare dilemma and here's what I've come up with. It makes sense if you can afford it to go ahead and sign up for Medicare Part B. You also want to get a Senior Advantage program going and also Part D to cover the drugs. In, in the event that I need to return back to the United States and or seek treatment on the island of Guam. So yeah, it was very interesting. As I was, I was pointing out in a previous video, um, the U.S. territories accept Medicare. Even though they may have some higher co-pays because you're outside of your, your uh service area, I should say, um, it's okay. It's okay. At least you're going to get uh, first class medical care, or I should say um, number 37 on the list that I saw, uh, can be obtained on the island of Guam. And so I would say that I'm looking at spending something like $200 per month uh, by accessing Medicare and then paying for the Part B, Part D coverage, and then adding the Medicare Advantage program, which is probably going to cost an average of $30 per month. So that would wipe out a few hundred dollars of my, of my uh, Social Security um, paycheck, but I would have peace of mind. Now, a missing component to this would be how do you get to Guam? It's okay if you're able to fly uh, to get on just a regular commercial flight and do the four-hour journey from Manila to Guam. But what happens if I'm caught up in an emergency, an emergency situation? I still need global health care. So turns out that a company called AXA Global Insurance uh, turned out to be the best deal for helping me out with repatriation insurance. Repatriation insurance basically means that they will transport you by air ambulance, by commercial flight, or by, by some other means in order to access medical care in the country of origin, which in this case would be the United States. But in order to get that medical care, uh, transportation, repatriation, you have to pay for regular global health insurance and uh, they offer it for a maximum uh, per incident uh, of about 1.6 million uh, again that's per year with a five thousand dollar deductible so you're gonna you're gonna blow through the first five grand before they start paying 80 percent of the coverage but the most important uh, most important part of the insurance offering is repatriation insurance so that you can uh, fly back to the United States in the event that you need to access Medicare and the part the part B, C, and D coverage. So I think that's a pretty good deal. So it was around what three fifty nine per month for me if I were to sign up tomorrow. And when you put that all together, you're probably looking at, at about. Uh, Oh, I don't know. You're looking at, uh, let's see, three fifty nine, four fifty nine, five fifty nine uh, per month to get all the bases covered for the medical insurance. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. I also checked with um, Alliance Healthcare, as promised. They're a little bit higher, but interestingly enough, and excitingly enough, if you can afford it, for a little under eight hundred dollars a month you can have insurance that works globally and in the United States. Of course, if I had uh, that available to me, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay out for Medicare Part B, C, and D. But it turns out that $800 is a little bit too expensive for me. When considering that I could, I could put together or piece together the, uh, the same program or close to it for a little under $600 per month. So I'm thinking that things are going to work out for me. Cigna also, um, Cigna was a little bit more expensive. They were somewhere in between 
the cost of Alliance and um, uh, AXA Global Insurance. But thing about that is, is that um, they didn't offer that uh, insurance in the United States. It had to be omitted. And so with the exception of the United States, they would cover, um, they would cover globally for you. But the whole thing is, is that I need a, I need a, a more comprehensive package. They offer it, but they offer it at, um, they offer it at, at, at a pretty high premium. I think the premium payment for everything that I needed with, uh, with Cigna, which is one of the finest insurance, uh, underwriters that you can, that you can get for healthcare was somewhere around 11 or $1,200 per month. Dang, I wish I could afford it. Okay, I'm going to move on to another topic. I want to talk about how many expats are there living overseas in different countries, you know, that they have a record of. I had mentioned that there's somewhere between 9 and uh, 12,000 or 12 million expats living overseas. And I was surprised to find out that in the Philippines, they're recording only... Um, 4,000 Americans living in the Philippines. I would have thought that the number would have been a lot higher than that. And those are figures from 2019. Uh, and they come from the Philippine Retirement Authority. Uh, the country that has the most retirees uh, in the Philippines is, it's the country that has the most retirees um, coming there, I should say is actually the Chinese with, with somewhere between 28 and 35K. The interesting thing about that is there's been some controversy concerning uh, Chinese retirees lately, and that is because the average age of a, of, of a Chinese um, citizen uh, that has a retirement visa is somewhere around 35 years of age. And they're thinking that's because that when the Philippines started offering uh, offshore gambling and building all those casinos in and around the Mall of Asia near the airport, they had to figure out a way to get the get the uh, Chinese employees into the country, and so long term that is, and it's difficult to get a, a working visa a visa to work, and so they um, umbrellaed them under uh, the retirement visa, but now. Duterte has frozen that, and the uh, that's President Duterte of the Philippines, and now they're asking the Chinese to exit the country. Of course, if you if you read the news, you know then you'll find, you'll uh, discover that um, they have a love uh, hate relationship with the Chinese government because of the conflicts that they're having. Some of those. Um, territorial islands that have a lot of resources that are claimed by the Philippines and which have been supported uh, that they belong to the Philippines in the international courts. Okay, so there's 4K um, Americans living in the Philippines, 28 to 35,000 Chinese with the average age of 35, and uh, other countries that are represented are South Korea, uh, who have about 14,000 members. East Indians, uh, about 6,000 live there. Uh, you have 2K from Hong Kong. You've got 4K from Japan, 5K from uh, Taiwan. And let's see, you've got... Uh, whole bunch from Australia, but I don't think there, there, there are um, as many Australians there as there are Americans. And that's kind of surprising because I think that Australia is only a, it's only a, a hop, you know, it's only a, a hop, skip and a jump from, you know, the furthest point in Australia to the Philippines, the most southern point of the Philippines. I'll, I, I don't even think it's more than a five-hour flight or four-hour flight. So anyway, that's what, what that is all about. So uh, my other choice, getting back to um, 
the medical stuff is that it would be to pay the premiums here for Medicare Part Part uh, B, C, and D, and then go annually to Guam to take advantage of that medical care and then pay out of pocket for any outpatient or inpatient treatment that I may need in the Philippines. Uh, the cost, by the way, of open heart surgery, I'm talking specifically about bypass surgery in the event that I need it, is somewhere around $22,000 in Thailand. And so as I, I pointed out in a previous video, you know, 22,000 isn't going to break the bank. You know, it's going to be, it's going to be, uh, it's going to put a dent in the, in the retirement fund, but it most likely wouldn't break the bank if I need to pay cash for those services. So anyway, uh, I have to think about it. I still have about a year and a half to go. I have to think about what I'm going to do. And maybe some of you viewers out there have some suggestions. And if you'd like, please feel free to subscribe, like, share, and definitely leave the comments for me on what your idea is as far as I, how I should be handling the medical care once I relocate to the Philippines. Uh, let's see. Oh, I have an update on the house. Okay, uh, most of you know... They've been getting, you know, it's, it's actually, I think, I believe it is towards the end of typhoon season in the Philippines. I'm not sure, but they've been getting hit pretty hard. And so I got a phone call the other day and uh, it looks like the contractor that's going to be building the house uh, on the island of Leyte there and by by Leyte is going to be available to start work a little bit sooner, weather permitting. And so they were talking about the first week in November, right around... American presidential election time, you know, they, they can get started on building the house. So the idea is to go ahead and give a play-by-play -play of how the home's constructed, how much it's going to cost, and whether it's a nice enough house that meets Western style of living that you would be able, you would be willing to move there and retire in it. I know that once I get started and once that house is up, there's most likely going to be no turning back. So uh, some of you may have done it before. You uh, Some of you have shared that you thought it was a crazy idea to be here in the United States while a home is being uh, built over there in the in the Philippines. And I believe that it is an insane idea, and we're, <laughs> but we're going to do it anyway and we're going to see how it works out. And then hopefully uh, we'll have family and friends over there on the island of Leyte who are going to be willing to give us um, still shot photos and some video content that we'll be able to post so you can see exactly what's going on. And again, I will give you the expenses as we go along, give you the play-by-play, -play, and, and most likely uh, we'll be factoring in uh, a little extra something some to make sure that we take care of the workers properly and that they have you know they have their snacks and their lunches which is customary for the workers who are building the house in the Philippines uh, I've learned a lot by watching YouTube videos on how to build a home in the Philippines this is nothing fancy I have friends there that have fancy houses Western style fancy houses but that isn't my my game I want to live like like the locals do, the middle class logo, lo, local local uh, citizenry, and I don't want to. I have no plans of presenting myself as though I'm the I'm the lord of the land. So that's the plan, and I hope it all works out. And once again, please subscribe, like, share, and comment, and we we will see you uh, shortly, very very soon. As a matter of fact. In the next video. Oh, oh! Before I go, I want to share something with you. Uh, I'm going to be doing what what's called um, prosperity seeding soon, and that is that um, that has to do with um, uh, leaving oh good luck money in appropriate places where it could be found by people who 
are a little less fortunate than um, you or I out there. And so it's called prosperity uh, seeding. It's a term that probably exists somewhere or I just made it up. But this is going to be fun because I have incoming from Amazon what are known as uh, prosperity envelopes and I'll share those with you in the next video. Okay, you guys take care. It's a lovely Friday evening and the beginning of what I think is going to be a super, superb weekend for weather and getting chores done here in the Sacramento, California area. Take care now. Bye-bye.